Ten-year-old Cash loves Fortnite. He plays every day. His mom says sometimes as much as five hours on weekend days that he doesn't want to go on playdates because he'd rather play Fortnite with friends online and that the game is the first thing he thinks about in the morning. He would definitely choose to do Fortnite over most things. Is there anything you'd rather do than play Fortnite? That's a good question. Um, no. And he says sometimes he plays so long that... No, when you're just like lightheaded and you can't get enough Fortnite, but it hurts inside. Fortnite has 250 million players, and while the company doesn't report hours played daily, parents are at wit's end. How much money do you think Cash has spent in-game? Thousands. I no longer pay him allowance in dollars. I pay him allowance in V-Bucks. Experts say games like Fortnite have a recipe to make you want to keep playing. Oh, I just killed a soccer skin. You're completing challenges. At the end of those various challenges, you level up, you earn rewards cosmetic items that get that you can show off. To see what actually happens in Cash's brain when he's playing Fortnite, we head to the Marcus Institute of Integrative Medicine at Jefferson Health. Neuroscientist Andrew Newberg so we're gonna put like a little helmet kind of on you. uses an fMRI machine to set up a comparison. How does Cash's brain respond to three things? Random visuals with color and motion, a similarly violent video game from a few years back, and then to Fortnite. So hopefully we'll get a good picture of how these games affect the brain and also how there's a difference between the two different games. Cash will do this exercise, but as a comparison, his schoolmate, 12 year old Amato, will go through the same process. One big difference Amato doesn't play Fortnite. It's one of those games where you kill each other, and I just, um, I don't, I'm not interested in the game. He prefers race car games and reading about sports. Amato watches video of the birds and the older game, and then Fortnite. I, I enjoyed the one with the, the black bird. Oh, you like the bird better? Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. Nice job. Now it's Cash's turn in the fMRI machine. Not much activity in his brain with birds and the older game, but Fortnite? Dr. Newberg says it was a very different story than his schoolmate. What lit up? So the area that really lit up is a dopamine area of the brain. You can see Cash's brain on the left, Amato's, the non-Fortnite player, on the right. Watching Fortnite, Dr. Newberg says Cash's brain had much greater activation than Amato's in an area called the anterior cingulate, a structure that in part is involved in dopamine release and for some people can be associated with addiction. These are areas that are very involved in our reward system of the brain. Dr. Newberg says gaming addiction is a real disorder, but gaming has also, though, been proven to improve visual and spatial awareness. And while the reward centers of Cash's brain are lit up, none of this is predictive of addictive behaviors. Just because we see a dopamine area lighting up in, in the gamer that we saw today, that doesn't inherently mean that the person has an addiction. What it means is that it's affecting the areas of the brain that are involved in that. We ultimately have to find out how they're doing as a person. Cash, by all accounts, is doing well in school and in other areas of his life. But for his mom, even this rough association is scary. How does that make you want to alter or adjust Cash's playing? Because what I witnessed is an incredibly patient, okay, polite, <laughs> functional kid who is obsessed with Fortnite. <laughs> it's a big deal. I think everything in moderation, and I don't know what moderation is with Fortnite.